Hey, do you see this down here? We got a little competition going on right here. Hey, we can hire those guys to come help us over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's another day again, and we're on the mountain working. We're up on the porch roof, and these guys are already at it, putting up the siding, drip cap, zip taping it. So we're gonna try to actually finish this so that we can paint it two coats and get all this stuff off of here before the roof goes down. That's gonna be important. Hey, are there any painters over there? You can ask them. If you're interested how we're doing this, they're working here and Arlo's got a cut station set up here. That means we actually had to drag all this siding material up the stairwell, snake it in, but it's a lot faster than uh, having someone way around the corner here and having to come down and yell at them and hand it up. So hopefully that's going to make it super fast. Right now, while the scaffolding is set up for this painting on the gable end, I'm going to take care of this dented piece of soffit. Unfortunately, we had a ladder blow over and really mess up a piece. So I'm pulling it out and replacing it with a new piece. Well, here it is. I'm trying not to destroy this piece of fascia. I actually was able to cut the heads off of these tiny nails and just let them go through the bottom edge. And so I can put this back together without replacing the fascia. That's actually the hardest part. Once I got that peeled away, I put a little nail tacked in the top edge there to keep it from totally falling off of the house and getting all mangled up. I can peel this back. I pulled the old piece out. I have a new piece cut right here and I'm just going to slide it in, tack a little nail in it and then um, re-nail this fascia and we are good to go. Let's see here. Hey, that's better. Here's the piece I took out. Oh, big dinger. Yeah. Can't say dinger. dinger. Can't say dinger. Bro. What? We've been here for two minutes and you got the lines all tangled up. Or... Oh, I don't Dude, I didn't even touch, here, take I didn't that. Touch these, man. Here, no, I need that one. Hey, if you haven't, make sure to check out one of our partners that makes gear that I love that's for working. It's for industrial athletes. Right now, though, I'm going to paint. And so I don't want to paint my nice True Work hoodie. So I got Jamie's jacket out of his truck. So watching Jamie get up there and replace that piece of soffit reminded me of all the times over the last 20 years where we've had to fix all kinds of crap that uh, we or someone else damaged on a brand new house before the people even moved in. And some of those things have included like one time the drywall guys boomed in the whole chunk of drywall, which is like a thousand pounds on our door threshold and just thrashed it. One time I was installing a refrigerator and there was a rock stuck under the tiny fridge wheel and it drugged the rock across a finished floor, like literally the day before the people were gonna move in and destroyed like 10 floorboards in the kitchen. Yep, that sucks. we've also had to replace gaskets on a bunch of entry doors where cables and hoses get run out and then the door closes and it destroys the, the bottom there. Yeah, people pull hoses over finished painted handrails. People walk on finished handrails. Yeah. And scuff yeah. them up yeah. with the, yeah, dirty boot One prints. time a bird hit a hit a view window so hard that it broke the glass and then we had to finish shattering the glass with a hammer to get it out of there and replace the glass before the house was done so yes it is a real struggle it is a real struggle the struggle is real if you're a contractor you probably know what we're talking about yep are you wearing my jacket right now maybe oh sure it looks like my jacket uh well this will get sun later right well, I just climbed up here, got everything ready. I'm all harnessed in to second coat this, but it's got like dew on it from last night. So it's it's a no-go, so. That's like the west face. Yeah, north face. West face. A couple little details about our paint job and caulking and that kind of thing. Ray is coming behind and, and brushing all the trim. You can see how the sprayer doesn't really cover in these little teeny trim nails, but when you brush it, it completely covers it in. Hit those right there, Ray for example, look at that. Oh, and it fills them in. Fills it in and it hardens and seals it. And uh, so that's an important little detail about what we're doing. And then also you'll notice there's nothing here to the window trim, to the actual window frame. And that's because we want to paint all this first and then we're going to use a clear caulk here. We don't want white caulk right onto this black window frame. It would look super smutsy. I would say janky. Yeah, so that's one thing that we're going to do after all the painting's done is come back clear caulk around all the window frames. See? Hey, it looks like our competition down the hill here has already got a machine on site. They got guys down there like looking at stuff, you know? We gotta kick it into gear, man. We're not gonna lose to these guys. I know, how about we get out of neutral here <laughs> and at least get in first gear for starters. I'm the one on the lockboard, bro. Uh, I'm busy, you know, talking on the phone and stuff. So uh, get this thing going. 
The paint we're using on this house because it's winter is called Flex Temp Paint. And uh, you can paint down to 35 degrees and it's still dry to the touch in two hours. So uh, that's great when it's, you know, winter out here. It's warm today, but it's been cold the whole time. Looking good there. Hey, uh, by the way, don't you get a drop of paint on my flashing? I try not to. I'm trying to paint this thing like a Lamborghini right now. Oh yeah, you know for sure. Make it look real nice. It's a little breezy for drop cloths today, so I've got uh, the deck masked off with scraps, and so far, no paint. So that's good. I guess you didn't spend much time deciding what to use to cover the deck. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Make it stop. <laughs> it's not ending. <laughs> not not ending. You know, some people like the dad jokes, though. Actually, I mean, I haven't met any of them yet. But <laughs> truck tour segment of the day, we've got what looks like an old toolbox. It is, and inside we've got all sorts of abrasive grinding discs, uh, mostly for metal. Uh, we've got this kind of flapper disc that's really nice to go on a angle grinder to remove a lot of wood material quickly. And, um, you know, a heavier duty sort of grinder. These are for cutting metal mostly. And the reason we can't, oh, there's one for, ooh, what? that looks handmade. <laughs> I don't know what that one's for. It's sort of a uh, factory model of the same thing. So another thing that's always in the truck. There you go, Ray. Pass that around. So you see these guys building that house down there? Yeah. It's just like McDonald's and Burger King. Okay. McDonald's does all the research and Burger King just builds it right next to the McDonald's. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> That's what these guys are doing. They see us building a gorgeous house, like we're just gonna build one next to them. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> been up on the roof you know why uh, I bet you're gonna tell me you're darn right I'll tell you why because I've been measuring all of the roof panels that means pieces of roofing and all of the flashings and all the components that go with this metal roof system so the reason it's important to get these numbers ahead of time is this company is actually out of state and they're gonna be making all of these trims or moldings or flashings on their giant metal brakes in 10 foot segments. Georgia they, Metals is the company. Georgia Metals, and yep. thank you, Georgia Metals. They need to know all these measurements ahead of time so that when they send the truck here that has the giant trailer on it, that has the giant forming machine in it that rolls flat metal into roofing panels, when that gets here, they need to also bring all the pre-made trims that I have written down on this list and know the exact numbers of every length of panel so that the operator of that machine can start fabricating these panels on the spot when he gets here and not have to wait for me to climb around and start yelling numbers off the roof like Jason. 37 one half! See, the guy, he doesn't want to deal with that. He doesn't want, he just wants I don't blame a, him. He wants a little list, a quiet list. Yeah, I like that. And he can just start making well, that, That's a good explanation because otherwise, most people wouldn't know why you need all those numbers, so. There you go. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. How's the paint cam going? Oh, it's going good, man. I got a lot of slow-mo videos. Of painting? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't have to say all right, do I? No. I'm going through the house making a list of all the interior doors with their sizes and their swing designations so we can get them ordered. Also the jam thickness. Yep. That's so. How thick that is. Most yep. of them will be four and nine sixteenths yes. jam. Standard wall, two before walls, two layers of half inch drywall, four and a half inches. They oversize at one sixteen, four and nine sixteen. And I wouldn't mind it if they made it four and five eighths a lot of times. Wouldn't bother me a bit. Okay. Saw cut. Okay. <laughs> Drop. <laughs> this door right here leads into the basement. In this house right now, this basement is unfinished and it is also unheated. Therefore, the building code and the inspector requires of us to install an exterior door here. This door has to be insulated. It's gonna be probably steel faced. It has got to have 
these gaskets all the way around the door as if this space is outside. That's how they treat this space. Yes. Pro tip. I, I really suspect in the future, the homeowner will finish this basement and they will completely remove this door. They won't have a door that goes down here. It'll just be open down the stairway. Something else interesting about doors is that they have a handing. They're either left hand or right handed. And that is in reference to the way they swing in reference to something. And in the States, if you put your back against the hinges and then the way the door swings, like this is the hinge side, that's the handing. So that's right hand. That'd be a left hand door. But I got a comment that in some other country like Sweden or somewhere, it's the opposite. When you're looking at the hinges, which way the door swings is the handing. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Somebody spelled hinge wrong. We fixed it. No problem. All right, here we go. We got the last couple pieces of siding going up. And guess who's putting it up? And guess who's filming it? Got any words about what you would like to say about this experience of siding the whole house? By myself? It's well, awesome. with me. Well, kind of. We're gonna use kind of like working by yourself, so. All right, we got the last piece of siding going up here. Woo. I'll give you the honors. Oh, thank you very Since much. Since I did most of it myself already. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that's a lie. <laughs> Everybody knows that's a lie. Yeah! Woo! So I thought that was going to be a little cooler with the whole last piece yeah, thing. I know. It was really anticlimactic. On one of our last videos, Eric showed how Ray likes to squeeze the air out of his soda bottles to hopefully keep the soda uh, you know, more bubbly for a longer period of time. And there were some real scientific um, type of comments that came in about how the gases and the uh, sugars and the air molecules and the atoms inside the bottle. And I, and then I got confused, I, I couldn't figure it out. But anyway, Ray, do you know there was a big debate about your, your bottle? Yeah, what was the conclusion? You're wrong. That's yeah. The, that's <laughs> the same people who, and who wear sunscreen, man. Yeah, the same people who don't about. believe in Bigfoot? Yeah, <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. There's your jacket, thanks man. Well, it's been a heck of a day on the mountain, fellas. Yeah. We put up the last piece of siding. Jason. We. <laughs> Jason. I love it. I love it. We painted one coat of paint on almost the whole house and two coats on a lot of it. Yeah. You guys were killing the paint. Yeah. We were. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't do it all, bro. I can't side and paint. And now it's time to go home. So uh, thanks for building with us today. See you tomorrow. I won't go on skiing. Oh, yeah. Okay.